talking a lot about mental health stuff this week, and I think it's important because uh, we are veering into that territory where I think we could all use a little bit of mental health advice. Uh, we could all use a little bit of good mental health practices. Um, I know I could, for sure, uh, because any time that I get to this level where I'm not feeling well or... Uh, you know, where my energy is a little bit low for whatever reason and I can't write and I can't create content or I can't be on the road or doing something creative. Um, I get, uh, it's real bad. Like I get, I, I fall into very like depressive and a anxious uh, cycles in my own head, especially when you're by yourself too. Uh, and you don't have positive, um, positive conversations to be had and, and things of that sort is, it, it, it's easy to get trapped in your head, but um, what uh, what might help all of that sort of stuff is uh, is soil. Just just some good old soil, you guys. If you got a green thumb, uh, you you might be able to combat depression uh, because uh, soil mycobacteria are good for ser serotonin productions to help fight with depression. So. Uh, there are these bacteria in soil that actually work with our body composition and help release serotonin um, to help us combat d depression. So doing gardening and and uh, and and working with with plants and and being with the earth, um, and, you know, even even if it's going outside and and I might do this later today and just kind of dig your toes into the ground just to feel the the earth, to feel the grass and stuff. It's it's it feels really cool. Like it feels great. Um, any time that I've gotten a chance to do that, I I loved it. I used to do that when I was a kid in India. Is I would run around with like no shoes on and shit all the time, uh, you know, really get the fucking mud and dirt and stuff in between my toes. It was awesome. It was super fucking fun. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, I and and a kid, like kids are always so fucking happy about things. Um, now. There, there is an issue in in, sense, in the sense of soil that uh, we're running out or, or a lot of our soil is contaminated um, because of all the shit that we have around us, right? Uh, we're, we're driving, you know, carbon emitting machines, um, we're fracking, there, there's radiation coming in from various different points. Um, so... There, there's a, there's a notion that the soil is contaminated, but we have a solution, uh, and that's hemp. Hemp can uh, restore soil and remove toxins from the earth. It's, it's actually a, a incredibly versatile plant. Um, some people might know hemp as you know, pe people can make clothing out of it, paper out of it. Um, th there's a variety of different uses. For hemp, it's a very durable, very versatile plant. And now, if you add hemp into your soil, it'll absorb some of the toxins. Uh, industrial hemp, specifically, um, can be used for a process called bioremediation, which is essentially you're, you're remedying the biological area that you are, uh, you're adding this, this thing to, right? Um, so it'll heal the soil. And, in, and, they, and they've done tests all around the world to prove that this is a, a viable means of, uh, of, of helping the soil. Uh, in 1986, in Ukraine, they removed radioactive elements from the soil after the Chernobyl incident. That's huge. That's huge. Like, Chernobyl was a big deal. And, uh, and, and they were able to, like, remove the radioactive elements by introducing help, uh, hemp into the, um, into the soil. And, and they discovered that it's not only removing the radioactive elements, but it's also removing heavy metals, um, uh, pesticides, solvents, uh, explosives, crude oil, landfill, leaching. All of these toxins are, uh, are, are getting removed out of the soil. So you just have nice, fresh, clean soil. Uh, to 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 you know to work with to to utilize for to make g good food for for your your population uh, and that's in Ukraine that they did that uh, cadmium cadmium is a heavy metal that causes uh, muscle pain joint pain it can cause spinal problems in people if there's too much cadmium in your system well in China uh, they use hemp to remove cadmium out of their farms. Um, and clean up their soil, 
uh, you know, and and it, they call they call the, they call it phytoremediation, which is air, soil, and water uh, gets hazardous contaminants removed from it. Um, so so they're using it for this process, and uh, and in two thousand eight, an Italian farmer saved his livestock by treating his grass with hemp because his farm was built near a steel plant, and it removed the heavy metals and toxins that were in the grass. Um, by the way, this is like basic by bi like basic biology shit, right? Like, like the cow. If there's toxins in the earth, they wind up in the grass. The cow eats the grass. The toxins go into the cow. We eat the cow. The the, the toxins go into us, and and so on and so forth, right? And then when we die, the toxins go back into the ground because we have this notion that we need to bury our dead in a fucking box. So, why isn't it happening in the States? Why isn't the, the United States um, utilizing this, especially because we have so much fracking going on, so many pipelines that we're trying to build, uh, we're, we're contaminating water left and right. Flint, Flint has a water crisis. Um, you know, Pittsburgh has a water crisis too. Uh, a lot of places don't have good water because we privatized it and now uh, the water supply is, uh, is not as good as it, it used to be. Uh, because of the bogus war on drugs. That's why. Hemp is, hemp is, um, is, is, Illegal or uh, I can't remember if it's illegal or just has heavy, heavy restrictions put on it. Uh, but I know you have to import hemp and stuff. Um, like you have to look at other countries and there's a, there's a limit on what you can and can't do. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it is, but if you know about it, uh, leave a comment down below uh, and uh, and I will take a look and and. Yeah, we'll, we, we'll, we'll chat about it in the comments if, if, if you would like to. Uh, but, but look, this is, this is preventing some real major environmental reforms. Um, this, is, this is preventing some major agricultural reforms. Um, because, you know, part of, part of the thing with, with the, sh the issue with soil itself is that we keep planting the same shit over and over again. And when we do that, um, the soil starts to, to lose... Uh, like nutrients and its and its richness, um, so it just goes bad. It just gets stale. Uh, think about it. Like even when you do the same thing over and over again, don't you kind of get bored and don't you kind of get like sick of it? And you're kind of like less enthusiastic about it because you're just doing the same shit over and over again every single day. And it doesn't, you know, there's no variety in it. There's nothing that you're switching up and trying something new and different. You know, like. Like that happens to humans, and and whether you like it or not, there you know soil is alive. There's bacteria and stuff. We do, we talked about the mycobacteria at the top of this segment, and like that's soil's alive. So I'm pretty sure if you keep planting just corn over and over again, that soil is going to be like ugh, fucking whatever. Like there's no new and there's nothing new being being thrown into it. Um, variety is the spice of life. Uh, it, it, even even in soil, so sometimes you gotta p plant spices. And I know in America, saying you gotta plant spices, that's like crazy, you know, because most Americans can't handle anything fucking spicy. <laughs> most my brother-in-law's uh, kind of crazy. He 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 outdoes pretty much everybody in my family with the with the spices that he can handle. Um, but. But that's what we need. And I talked about this about a year ago on a Forkful episode. But there's this thing called rotational farming where you use the land to plant different kinds of foods and different kind of plants at different points in the year. And, you know, those plants provide the soil with various different nutrients to keep it rich, to keep it um, as, as, as strong as it can be. So rotational farming is... Something this guy named Robert Rodale talked about, and it's and it's like a huge way to fucking help farming, and and completely change the way that we farm. It would probably change the way that we look at the agricultural industry and the economics surrounding the agricultural industry, um, and help us be a little bit more understanding of like when things are in season and when things are out of season, um, 
and how to be patient about these things. Like it, I think I think just it, just using that one thing would kind of transform a bunch of different things about this the the society and culture that uh, that we are that we are living in. Um, now, here's the, other th here's the other part of it, though. This, this, this is the last thing I want to say about the subject matter is, look, just because we have a way, let's say we legalize hemp and we start using this in our soil and start pulling out, you know, uh, all the awful shit, the, the heavy metals and uh, the fossil fuel toxins and the, and the landfill leaching and the plastics and all this shit that's in our soil now, uh, we introduce hemp into it. It starts uh, over the course of the next five years, leaching all of it out cleaning up our soil, making it more, making it stronger for us to make better food. That doesn't mean um, that we should continue doing the things that we're doing. It doesn't mean that we, we don't need a renewable source of energy. That's a, a, re a clean renewable source of energy. Um, it doesn't mean that we don't need to divest away from fossil fuels or uh, not have pipelines going through communities, right? We, we gotta keep pushing for both of these things. Uh, because we might have a way to undo the bullshit that we've done to our soil um, and then figure out how to possibly do that to our w w to our air. Um, I know there are some people that say that I don't think we can help the, the atmosphere based on the damage that we've done. Uh, you know, the, the amount of carbon that's in the atmosphere is too high. Uh, and maybe that's true, maybe that isn't, but we're never going to get there until we try to f do something about it. Uh, and and then change change our behavior patterns in order to like create a better system at play. Uh, so yeah, you know, I, I don't I think we should we shouldn't just use this as like a stopgap. Is sometimes what happens is and and this happens all the time. Politically speaking, this happened right. Is like we get to this point where we go, yay, we did a thing that kind of resembles progress, and now we can continue doing all of the other bullshit that we were doing, right? Like like when Obama became president, I think everybody was just like, yay, first black president, we solved everything in America. America is fixed now, and everybody's gonna have health care and racism, is, and it was like, no, everything was not fixed, because and it's the same thing with Bernie Sanders. If Bernie Sanders gets elected and becomes president, it doesn't mean that you know, all the problems that we're facing with capitalism, all the problems that we're facing with this unregulated, unfettered system gone amok is just going to be fixed. It, you know, it's it's cool that we have a leader that represents the progress that we want to see, but we're still going to have to fight and try to achieve that progress. So and this is the same thing is if hemp gets legalized, it doesn't mean that everything is fixed. It means that now we have to implement it and do the work that we need to do in order to make sure um, that things stay as good as 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 they can be. Uh, so so you know the fight the fight doesn't stop with just this thing. This is just sort of the beginning is what I'm describing here. Hi everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I really really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to be making daily videos, so make sure you come back to this channel. Make sure that you are subscribed. You hit that bell so you're getting the notifications. Uh, because we are going to be putting up videos every single day, uh, keeping you guys updated on what's going on around the world, keeping our critical thinking skills uh, up to date as well, uh, talking about some interesting ideas, talking about some topics that you won't hear on your corporate mainstream outlets. Um, I'm also a touring stand-up comedian, uh, but uh, at the moment, I don't have any live stand-up comedy dates to tell you guys about. So uh, if you have the means to and would like to, to, to donate to this channel, to donate to uh, creating videos to improve the quality and quantity of these videos, feel free by, uh, by going to ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com slash donate. There you will find various different ways that you can either become a sustaining member uh, via those big orange buttons, Patreon, Bandcamp, and even PayPal, uh, or by just making a one-time donation uh, via the aforementioned PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, 
uh, whatever you feel most comfortable doing. And that's if you have the means to do it. I understand that we're all struggling through this time. Uh, so all of these videos are going to be available for free. And like I said, will be up every single day. And a huge way that you can help uh, is by sharing these out. Uh, hit it hit it up on your social feeds on on the on the twitters and the and the alternative social feeds and the instagrams and the facebooks just share it around tell it tell as many people as you possibly can uh, especially if you enjoy uh, the topics that we are discussing on this channel and once again make sure that you are subscribed you hit that like button um, and get uh, get new eyes on this channel thank you guys so much uh, I, I, and everybody that's already become a sustaining member or a patron um, or has donated, um, thank you so much. It really, really means a lot, and it helps. Every little tiny bit helps in uh, in in in, the, in this time of of need. So uh, be good to each other, stay safe out there, and we'll see you tomorrow with new videos.